Hey, what's up? I'm Poisonberry. I make uh, AI art with AI. So here's a Comfy UI tutorial on something I like to call a Control Net Assistant Latent Upscale. Control Net Assisted Latent Upscale, sorry. Uh, so if you ever use Automatic 11.11, you are undoubtedly familiar with the High Res Fix option. Um, if you don't know what that does, it basically just takes the image that you generated. It does a secondary pass after an enlargement or an upscale of some sort. And then it, it, it's basically just an enlarge and enhance. Um, the problem with this is um, it the latent upscale method, at least, usually requires a relatively high denoise around 0.6. Let's um, we'll just queue this up right now so we can see what's... So this is what a latent upscale looks like. Hold on. This didn't seem to go through. EQ, key prompt, cancel. Keep prompt. Okay, so let's get our initial image. I'm using the same seed so that I like I really like this picture. So this is the initial image right here. And then you latent upscale, and now it looks like absolute garbage. So this is the reason why you need a high denoise when you're using a latent upscale. The problem with that is if you've ever used AI or image to image, you know that denoise is effectively a how much do I want the image to be changed slider. So a high denoise equals an image that will be not drastically different, but it'll be different enough to the point where you will absolutely notice. And that's not always desirable because in this particular case, I like this picture. I really like this. I just want an enhancement. I want it bigger with more details. But when you do the latent upscale, it changes very drastically. Like the eyes are completely different. The, the we lost color on the hair around here I think we lost this rose on her sleeve too the outfits completely different it's not completely different but it's obviously very very different in the eyes too it just it looks I don't like the way that looks so that's why I recommend something called the control net assisted latent upscale and what that does is it it does what it sounds like it uses control net to assist the the latinet upscale <laughs> spelled that wrong sorry but uh, yeah, in this case, I'm using just, it's really simple, just a standard line art preprocessor, not the anime one. Um, the anime one kind of messes things up sometimes. Um, yeah, it's just literally line art preprocessor, apply control net into the model, and then boom, get the image. So it preserved the colors. We have, I think, a lot more color detail. But it's, it's still different. It's still different, but it's, it's more similar. Like that rose, that rose, we have this rose, we have the rose right there, we got this one. You can't see my mouse pointer, sorry. It added some makeup to it, added some weird makeup to her face, but yeah, that's whatever. I think I like it. I think this is much better. So I'm going to show you how to actually do this. In case you don't want to study the uh, study the actual node tree, I'll just uh, show you how to do it right now. Let's remove these groups. I don't need to remove this one, keep this one here. Let's remove that. All right, so we need to get these image previews in here again. So we get image, preview image. I like doing preview image instead of save image at the intermediary steps so I could actually see what's going on with my workflow. So we need a sampler. So all this is just very basic stuff. It's just, you know, your, your load checkpoint, your positive, your negative prompt, your latent. Goes into the case sampler, goes to beta code, and you get an image, all right? So then you take the latent from the case sampler there's a couple ways you could do this. You could either take the latent from the case sampler and put it into an upscale latent, or you can do um, just like an image upscale and then plug the image node into here. And then you still have to convert it back to latent though, because it needs this, the case sampler needs a latent image input. So the way you do that is you go to ba -ba -da -ba -da latent v n code. You plug in pixels, plug in your v variational auto encoder, and then the latent goes into there. So there's two ways you can do it. There's actually more than two ways. You could also um, upscale using a model if you want. But yeah, just to keep it simple, we're just going to do the latent upscale. Yeah. It's the thing that everyone does. You click latent upscale because that's what the Reddit guides say. Why not? So plug that into here. And so normally, if you're doing a regular latent upscale, you would just plug your prompt directly into here. But that's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing. We don't do that. We are going to use preprocessors. 
specifically the line art preprocessor. You're gonna notice there's one here that says anime line art preprocessor. That is not the one we're going to use, all right? I'm gonna show you right now why. So let's go to preprocessor again. We get the, the anime one, we get the regular one, the line art. This is this, the, the non-anime one is the one we use, even if you do anime arts. Why? You're gonna, we're gonna, sh we're gonna show you. You're gonna see right now. So we got this, clone this one, put this down here so we can see the difference between the two. Got that pretty image, boom. That's why, this is the anime line art preprocessor and dude, there's so much noise. These lines are so rough. What is this, what's this stuff on her face? What are these like spots, man? Like what, what is, what are these dots? What's this weird pattern? What the heck, dude, this looks so much cleaner. Look at that, it's so much better, dude. Don't use this. Don't use the anime one. I don't even know what this is for. Use the regular line art preprocessor. Okay. So we have that. We have the regular line art preprocessor. Not the anime, even though this is anime art, kind of. We're not using anime. All right. I'm not saying that anymore. So the next thing to do is conditioning and apply control net. So the image, it's not this image. No, it's this, it's the preprocessor image. That's the one you need for the apply control net. So unless you're using the tiled preprocessor, but we're not gonna do that right now. That's a different tutorial. So image, line art in here, control net. All right, we need to go to loaders. Loaders, load control net model. And what's the one that we're using? You have to match this to the, the preprocessor you're using or else you'll get problems. You need line art. All right, so we plug that into here. In conditioning, that would be our positive prompt. So you just take that positive prompt right here, put that bad boy right there, plug this into here, and then model comes over here. So this is, gives us a latent output, which means we need to decode the latent into a pixel space. So that goes there. Get the V from over here, put that into here. And then get another, you could do an image save if this is your last step, but the latent upscale is never my last step, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna get an image preview. Make that bigger. Q prompt, fixed, let's raise the steps a little bit, why not? So I'm keeping this seed fixed because I, I really like this image. I think it's really, really pretty. And if you're curious about the prompt, I just made these words up. I played Final Fantasy VII, that's how I get Stardust. It's uh, Red 13's, I think it's one of Red 13's Limit Breaks or something like that. Stardust Shine, I have no idea, I literally just made this up. Apocalypse Rain, literally just made it up. Nuclear Explosion Effect, saw one once, thought it was cool, put it in the picture. This is still generating. If you think I'm talking to waste time, nope, it's talking to cover time because this takes a while to do. All right. So hey, it's it's just gonna give us a picture that looks like this. I don't know why I have to wait this long. 50 steps is probably too much for a tutorial. And then we don't need this down here either. So, ooh, that is very, very different. That's because I use a denoise of one though, okay. So maybe denoise one's a little too high, but still the composition is still pretty much the same. We have you know, the flower, we got the other flower. That's pretty much the main thing I was concerned about. We're just keeping the flowers. But, uh, I don't know, let's see if we can make this still look a little more like the other one. Change the sampler name and the scheduler. To, I don't know why, but Keras. Keras sampler with uh, SDE, the stochastic differential equation, seems to do a pretty decent job. Let's keep this at one, actually. It seems to do a pretty decent job at actually preserving everything that was in the original image. I'm not entirely sure how samplers work in that regard, but if my, my recommendation is that if you are doing something that involves image to image and you don't want it to change too drastically, Keras. Use a Keras scheduler and then one of these DDPM blah, blah, blah. Don't use Euler Ancestral if you're doing any paint stuff because that, it, it changes things a lot. Just in my experience, if you have different experience, let me know in the comments maybe. Maybe I don't know everything, who knows? We'll find out. 50 steps was too much apparently. This is taking so long. One iteration per second, oh boy. That looks worse. Bring this back down to 0 0.7, 0 0.6, whatever. 
I don't want 50 steps. We're just going to do 20. 29. Whoa. All right, there we go. I mean, it's just freckles now. Whatever. There you have it. That's uh, that's my method for uh, control net assist and Latin it upscale. If uh, if you learn something, then uh, cool. If you uh, want more tutorials, then uh, just 